Hey there, welcome to theCUBE's coverage of Splunk.conf21. I am Lisa Martin. I've got a new guest joining me on theCUBE for the first time. Please welcome Tony Pierce, the Senior Manager of Cybersecurity at EY. Tony, welcome to the program. Hi, glad to be here. So, your LinkedIn profile, I wanted to ask you about this. It states that you are delivering an evidence-based approach to cybersecurity. What does that mean, an evidence-based approach, and how are you and Splunk helping to deliver this approach? Yeah, and I'd like to call it like the outcome-based approach. Basically, you start with what you're trying to accomplish and you work your way backwards. A lot of people say, hey, I've got a problem, and then they go try to buy a tool or whatever to go fix the problem. I go in and I'm like, all right, I got a problem. Let me figure out what's holistically I can use in the environment. So it's just basically working back. Say you have you know, a breach. What do I? What are all the different things that I need to leverage to meet the controls for that breach, right? And so, um, think of MITRE in a way as a layered way of looking at things, um, and then full defense in depth. So that's kind of my approach. I go and I figure out what the problem is, and I answer the question. And I use Splunk to do that, right? Because Splunk is able to give me. Um, I'm a big data to everything kind of guy. And so I like to be able to pull in all the different data types that I need to answer a question um, to do that, right? And so whether it's uh, vulnerability management, patching or networking, um, a good a good example of this, like uh, most common um, hacks in the world go after known vulnerabilities, right? And we get kind of caught up in all that. Um, one of the things we like to do here at EY is like, we like to combine what, what's happening in the network. So the threat landscaping, which is the network guys, uh, the vulnerability guys who are scanning the data, and then actually the patching, who is who is actually you know mitigating the problem, putting all those into one screen has really helped people with their risk rating. Talk to me a little bit about some of the changes. We've seen massive changes in the threat landscape in cybersecurity in the last year and a half during the pandemic. We've seen massive increase in ransomware and DDoS attacks, ransomware becoming a household word, the executive order that just came down a few months ago. What are some of the things that you've seen? Have you seen the acceleration of organizations coming saying, help, we know that it's not a matter of if we get attacked, it's when. How are you, how are you seeing the last 18 months influence what you're doing? Oh man, it's been quite a crazy, right? And so, um, by trade, I'm, I'm an instant responder, you know, uh, high level investigator and also a solutions architect. So I, I get called in a lot for those kind of things. It has been kind of nuts, but you know, one of the things I always tell them is start under, understanding what your threat landscaping is um, and identify your key cyber terrain. Unfortunately, most, you know, most companies, as they grow, they get really big. They don't really do that. So they don't, they miss the consolidation point, right? I always say, hey, you know, if you're, if you're going to do this, if you say you have a ransomware attack, you, the first thing you can do is, you know, there's so many different controls that you can do to stop that, but you really need to know where it is and injecting, and then you can isolate if you need to. Um, what we're seeing in the companies is they, because they, they don't all have full coverage, right, and they expect their endpoint protections to actually do its job, you know, and sometimes that's, you know, don't get me wrong, there are some amazing uh, endpoint protections out there, but you really need to be able to log it, you need to know what it looks like, and you need to know where it is, so if you need to, in case of a, a ransomware attack, as it spreads through the network, you're able to isolate it and reroute it to like, I like to call it a uh, black hole VLAN and just reroute it so I can isolate it and then I can go after it. Um, instead of trying to try to do every endpoint at a time, because you, you, you'll, get, you'll get whacked. Definitely. So talk to me about working and partnering with Splunk and its full security stack. How, does that, how is that a differentiator for you in your role? Okay, so one of the things that we do here at EY is we, we combine SIM and SOAR as one combined offering, right? So we, we try to bring the data in, we operationalize it, and then we try to do something with it, right? We, we find that, and then if you really think about that in a situation with the Splunk products, it's, you, it's the Splunk Core, Splunk ES, and then Phantom, right? And so that's the automation play. And so we try to combine all those into one combined offering so that when when bad things happen, where we make a decision, we say, all right, so hey, um, what we're seeing in the industry is like a lot of times people spend so much time 
hunting the known because it forgets about the unknown. Think about the Target hack a couple of years ago, um, the oil and, and gas attack just recently. You know, they, they miss those core things. So we, we try to say, all right, well, let's automate a lot of that known stuff so that the incident responders can focus on the unknown. And so when you, we combine all three of those products, you, you get a pretty good security stack. When you say automating the known, is that at all in any way like let's helping companies get back to basics? I've been hearing a lot in the last 18 months that some from a data protection perspective and from a ransomware attack perspective, it's so oh, it's it's when, not if. But is are you seeing that companies are are sort of skipping past the basics where security is concerned? Well, it's, I don't say it's skipping past the basics, right? I, I think that sometimes people get caught up in the definitions of what it is, right? So there's there's so many infer, there's so many frameworks out there, right? So like I'm a big fan of zero trust. Um, a lot of incident responders use MITRE. I use MITRE for that as it, as it retains the incident responders. Some people like to use high trust. And I think a lot of what happens is they get lost in the confusion of all these different frameworks, right? I like to go back to basics. I've been doing cyber for, oh my, oh my gosh, about 20 plus years, right? Um, I'm an active hacker. I, I, this is what I do. I like to call it defense in depth, right? And so when you're, when you're doing that, if you follow the defense in depth side, it doesn't matter what framework you have, you can actually go back and you can fix that problem, right? So going back in the automation of unknown to an unknown, we know an IOC is 100%. Now you can change, when I say IOC, it's like a hash, right? So when a bad thing happens, like an exploit, first thing we try to do is we try to grab that hash and then we try to build a role around it to stop that hash from spreading and going anywhere else. That's a, we know 100% of it's bad. Now, can, Exploits change their hash, absolutely, and it happens all the time. But for that moment in time, that hash is 100%. And so we try to say, hey, look, you know, we got an endpoint protection, but also, why don't we use automation to block it at the boundary? Or why don't we keep it from doing lateral movement? Why don't we, why don't we activate it from a defense in depth so you have your network? Um, I like to say, hey, look, you have your egress, ingress, and your, and your lateral movement. So if you understand all those three effect vectors, you can automate the control so that it doesn't spread. You know, you had mentioned ransomware has been really huge, right? And everybody goes, oh, well, you know, if we do zero trust, zero trust talks about, you know, segmentation a whole lot. And segmentation is hugely important. It won't stop everything, but it'll, it'll do a good job. Being able to leverage Splunk, we actually pull that in and we say, hey, you know, from a, an EY, we take all that network and we try to put it in a single pane of glass so that we can see everything. And then once we're able to see it, once we get a good, robust data set and understand that operations, we're able to go in and automate it. And so if I can go in and say, hey, look, all these hashes are bad. Yeah, I'm not going to rely on my endpoint. I'm going to put a, another control in place. So if the endpoint misses it, I have another control that will actually layer it and prevent it from spreading which is absolutely critical. Talk to me about some of the outcomes that EY and Splunk are delivering to the end user customers. Everyone's always talking about, it's all about outcomes. What are some of those? Yeah, so we have, um, we've really embraced like the data to everything, right? So I, I, I kind of have this opinion of like, um, you know, everything's data, so everything needs to be secured, right? Um, the people who miss that tend to get whacked pretty quickly. Um, so what I like to do is I'm like, all right, so, you know, like IOT is huge out there right now. OT is doing it. So some of the things that we've done is like from a healthcare perspective, um, we've done, we've combined IOT and, uh, and IT into a commonality solution, leveraging like network, simple things like pulling in from the WAN, pulling in, um, understanding what those MAC addresses are so that you can actually you do like a workplace analytics around um, say RFID tagging, right? So you know where your people are at. Um, here we also do like a what we call a sock in a box, where we put that put everything together that a, every like a from a tiered perspective, like a tier one, tier two analyst, you know what is it they need to do to mitigate if, mitigate and observe something. What does the investigator need, right? So we try to simplify those conversations, and so that you know it's actually around like a threat hunting as well, like threat hunter and investigator they're totally separate roles, right? So they need to be separated. We also like tie in like the, um, what is it? I really hate uh, like PowerPoint. I'm not a big PowerPoint guy, right? So I really like to be able to give the CISO, he, he needs to understand what risk is, right? So we try to automate that so he can get to that to, he can pull up his phone and pull up his Splunk app and he knows at any given time what his risk rating of his company is, right? So we try to combine all of those in like, 
again, you know, there is, um, I, we do stuff around uh, blockchain, supply chain, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's a data analytics tool. You know, a lot of people look at Splunk as a SIM. I don't necessarily look at it that way. I look at it as a data analytics tool that does SIM. It's just one of the functions this does. If you start understanding data and all the different things that data can do, then you need to go in and you can use Splunk to basically answer those questions so that you can start putting in a control set. What, what's the differentiated value that EY and Splunk bring together to customers? What really sets this partnership and what it delivers apart? I, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm biased on that, right? Because I, I run the North America SIM team for EY, uh, for consulting. So I, I would say out of those two things is innovation and time to value, right? So for, for, let's start with innovation for a minute. Because Splunk is so customizable, right? And it's because it pretty much can integrate with just anything, we're able to very, very fast take data in and do something with it and operationalize it. Doesn't matter who the customer is, they're going to give us a question. We'll break it all the way down and we understand and we'll give them an answer. A good example of that is like uh, we were doing stuff around PCI uh, compliance, the checklist, it, you know, the financial sector, they get a huge amount of audits, right? And especially around PCI. So we took all the PCI checklist and we said, all right, what can we, what can we answer those questions? And so we built a dashboard that actually sends out a report to internal audit and we call it compliance over time, right? It's looking at data in a different perspective to answer a question. Now, the other thing is that we, we try to do here is, you know, with the, as we do as Splunk and Splunk helps us with this, right? We have a great relationship with them is, is, is um, basically, oh, I have a, I lost my train of thought there for me. So uh, innovation is time to value, right? So from time to value, what we do is we actually say, hey, look, we have a lot of the stuff in our lab. But one of the things I don't like to do is I don't like to um, go to clients and say, hey, look, we, we're going to build this for the first time. I like to say, hey, look, here's these questions in the industry. Get ahead of the question and go build it in our lab so that when we when we actually get on site, our time to value is not in months, you know, we can be in weeks, right? Because we already have a huge repository of um, use cases. Now those, every use case is actually tied into an automation play. And so when we say that, we say, hey, look, here's everything in Splunk. Let's do this, let's go answer that question and let's go automate it. And you let's make a decision where, where we want to automate it and where do we want a human interaction. Talk to me about what's next for the partnership in, in terms of the future. What what can you tell us where EY and Splunk are going together? So we've been partnering around, um, I think our next things that we're really looking at is AI. Um, we're really getting kind of into that as well as AR and VR technology, right? And so, um, especially around like, a, I'm looking at like the energy companies and the financial banking. One of the things I would love to do is like um, go into, you know, um, a bank ATM, right? And right now it takes somebody actually has to plug into that and to do a diagnostic on it. I would love to be able to get to a, like a, a point where you can just take your camera, scan the uh, QR code on the, on the device and then pull up an AR and it runs all the diagnostics on the device as it's there. Another one is like the um, infrastructure. Um, instead of actually going out, plugging into, like, say, um, a solar panel, going out, pulling out a tablet, just scanning the solar panels, and it tells you if it's good or bad. And that's kind of the next step that we're trying to do. We're trying to really take that uh, um, data to everything and just kind of turn it on its end. Um, like, and you got to remember, everything is data nowadays, right? It's not the old days where you know, things are moving around and everything's in a file folder, it's, it's, it's gone, right? Everything is data, so everything is security, right? And we need, the first thing is we need to know what our threat landscape is. We need to know what that is and we need to apply that, right? So if we can simplify answering questions, that's so much better. And one of the things I like about Splunk is it scales really well, right? And I've looked at some of his competitors and don't get me wrong, I mean, everybody has their place. But one thing I like about Splunk is it doesn't, it literally scales really well. So the more data you can get into it, it actually does better, right? Um, and how you do it. Now, that's just our approach. That's the next steps that we're really looking at um, from a technology standpoint.
Exciting stuff, Tony. Thank you for joining me sharing what EY and Splunk are doing together, some of the unique use cases that you're helping to solve for customers and some of the things that you're excited about. We appreciate your time and your information. No, this is fun. I, you know, like I said, I'm a big fan. I even wore my Splunk shirt just for this meeting. So. <laughs> Fantastic, you're on brand. Well, Tony, thank you again. We appreciate your time. All right, thank you. You have a wonderful day. Thanks, you as well. For Tony Pierce, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE's coverage of Splunk.conf21. Thanks for watching.